Exploitation horror, William Fruitt triple feature. Funeral Home is coming up next. And I want to mention a couple things first. I forgot to mention in my intro before the original films, but um, today is Bela Lugosi's birthday. I forgot to wish him a happy birthday. So, happy birthday to Bela Lugosi today. Other than that, I want to invite down um, our special guest for tonight, the star of Funeral Home. She was also in Happy Birthday to Me. She was also in Curtains, which we showed here a couple of years back, Ms. Leslie Donaldson. I also wanted to very quickly before we go into an intro introduction with Leslie, I wanted to mention too that she brought two friends with her down tonight. I wanted to welcome them down here also. We've got Eileen Dietz, aka Captain Howdy from The Exorcist, which is showing this Saturday as, at midnight, as I mentioned, a very rare 35 millimeter screening of the film. We also got Lisa Langlong down there from Class of 1984, also in Happy Birthday to Me, came down to join us tonight too. Thank you very much. And Leslie, we're going to talk a bit about you know, Funeral Home, which originally had a different title. Yes, I know Cars, it was originally Cars released. In the Night. Cars in the Night. And this was one of your earliest films that you did, as a, as a earliest yes. feature films you did. That's right. So maybe talk about uh, the film and getting into it and how you met the director and got involved with the film, and then we can talk a little bit more and take some questions from the audience. Sure. Uh, well, this was my first um, horror film, and um, I remember my agent said, you know, she phoned me up and said, oh, there's an audition for this, this movie, and it's a horror movie, and do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, because I, I was raised going to the Hammer Horror Movies with my aunt, so I really loved horror movies. Um, so how I met Bill Fruitt was I had auditioned for him, and I just remembered this recently, I couldn't, you know, I can't believe I've forgotten this. I had auditioned for him about a year or so earlier than, than I had done, I had auditioned for Funeral Home, uh, for a little short film called, I think it was called Christmas Two-Step or something, and it was, I think his wife wrote that one too. So um, I went in and auditioned, and I was auditioning for the lead, and the lead was a ballerina, and I'm not a ballerina. Um, but when I went in, uh, he asked me if I had a monologue to do, and I didn't, I didn't even know what a monologue was then. I was like 12 or 13. And he said, well, can you recite something for me? And uh, I had just done a play at school in junior high. Um, <clears throat> and I played the hooker in it. So I, uh, I did my little thing for him, my little hooker speech. And uh, I think I, I obviously charmed him. <laughs> what kind of junior high did you go to? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> a fun one. Um, so he, I think, remembered me from that, and actually he cast me in the short movie, but he gave me a smaller part. And um, so when I went into audition for Funeral Home, I, I actually can't really recall um, auditioning for him, per se, for it. I, I know I went in and auditioned for uh, Nancy and Janice Allen, who were the, the producers. Barry Allen was their dad, and he produced the movie Cries in the Night, Funeral Home. And I, I went in primarily to audition for them, so I'm kind of under the impression that it was a lock. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my little story of how I met Bill Fruitt. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a pretty uh, not, not complicated audition process for this. And as I mentioned, this originally came out in Canada in 1980 as yes. Cries in the Night. Here in the U.S., I think it had 82 release. I think so, and yeah. I think that was when they retitled it Funeral Home. Right. I know they were having some issues with the title because they thought it sounded too pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> so they we, wanted to change the title because I think there might have been a, a soft porn movie, Cries in the Night. I, don't know. I know Canada had issues with pornography. I know whenever, oh, I, whenever I ship prints from here totally. to uh, friends and Canada who run theaters, I always have to very clearly mark on the customs forms, not pornography. Yes, yes, you have to do that there. Exactly. And if you were here last month, you heard our friend, uh, our, our friend Dan Halston was here talking about bringing kung fu movies over the border, a 70s movie called Dirty Ho, which, came <laughs> up, which the Canadians had a lot of right. issues with also. Right. And now this film has become kind of hard to see at this point. It's not, it, you know, it's, it it's, it's kind of fallen off the radar a bit, but it's a film title that a lot of people have heard of and wanted to see it. How many people here have never seen Free Home before? Wow, okay, so, so the large majority of people have not seen the film, so it might be hard to do some, a Q&A, but I'm going to take a couple yeah. of questions from the people who have seen it. Sure. Don't give away any plot points, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about some of the plot that okay. is not going to give anything away. But any question, people have actually uh, had a question for Leslie about Funeral Home specifically, not about other films she worked on. Has anybody seen Funeral Home before? 
All right, one person. I actually, I actually do like these kind of nights though, where nobody's seen the film. Because a lot of yeah, times we show, good. a lot of times we show films here that everybody has seen a hundred times, yeah. and it's really, I, I find it really interesting to see an audience and seeing a film William for the first Pruitt time. William is, is a comedian. I didn't know that. I mean, he's funny, <laughs> but the way he writes his movies, I mean, he's got a lot of people are laughing. So, I don't think he intended it for that, but um, but yeah, you know. I'm sure this one would be funny too. <laughs> Did you want to say anything about working in the film itself? The film was a very low budget shoot yeah. at the time. Um, yeah. And like a lot of these Canadian films, was this a tax shelter film? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, it was part of the tax shelter. Uh, well, we're, though we're, it's a Canadian film, so I mean, it wasn't really, I mean, the tax shelter for itself. <laughs> right, exactly. So maybe talk about the shoot itself and working on the film with William Fruitt and the, and the cast and some of right. the, and how you felt. You were relatively young when you made this film still too. I was 15. And being yeah. thrown into a horror film, some people have a hard time with that. Some people coming from a horror fan background enjoy right. that. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I, I really was cast to play me. I mean, I, as a 15 year old girl who goes to the country to help her grandmother uh, open a bed and breakfast and then strange things happen. So um, they just really wanted, uh, uh, you know, your typical girl next door. And I guess I fit that bill at the time. And uh, uh, so yeah, the shoot happened in the summer of 79. And I remember that because my Sharona was the big song back then. And I loved that song. And uh, any time that would come on when we were traveling somewhere in the crew, and I'd be like, turn it up. You know? So they loved me for that. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it was exciting for me because it was my, I had just done running and uh, I played Michael Douglas's daughter in that, but this one I had, I'm in it a lot. So um, I kind of, you know, along with Kay Hodge, kind of carried the movie. So it was a big responsibility for me. And, uh, and William Fruitt was great. I mean, he was such a, he's a very, um, you know, he's a very serious man. He was very intense, but also very gentle. He was a gentle person. And uh, so, uh, I really, I had, a, I, I, it was like camp for me, you know. And you would come more from like a child modeling background you had yeah, before you I, into acting? That's right. I had done a lot of um, Sears catalog work, so um, I think my you, underwear. I think you forgot <laughs> to mention one key point, too. You, you go to help your grandmother open a bed and breakfast right. in a former funeral home. It was a former <laughs> funeral home. Which is so, a little, that's, that's a little bit of a twist there to the old bed and breakfast point. It is, exactly. I, I liken the story to uh, it's Little Red Riding Hood meets Psycho. So if that... Yeah, I, uh, I assume most of you have seen Psycho, so I think you'll see... Has anyone here has never seen Psycho? Oh, come on. Oh! All right, nobody willing to admit it. Well, if you've seen Psycho, I think you'll see some things that are They're very, kind very of similar. familiar in this film, if you've seen Psycho. I mean, a different, yeah. a different take on the concept, yes, in a way. Yes, a different take, yes, and yes. This, this film, I, I find this is more a, a moody, atmospheric film. Very it's moody, kind of a, yeah. It's a, a, a kind of more noir, I guess. I don't know if that's... The right term, but um, I mean, I didn't program it to be the third movie, but I think it's a good movie for this time of night. Also, yes. this is a movie that fits well with sort of close to the midnight hour. Yes, people enjoy that. Yes, and there's a black cat in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and talk a little about the reception of the film. As we know, like we said, there was a different title in Canada. It, it took yes. a couple of years for it to get its American release under the yeah. funeral home title. So, when the film was done, what was the kind of reception it got in Canada, and how did it affect you as, as an actress and um, your well, career? Back then, you know, in Canada, basically, um, you just you know, you, I think that, well, I actually think this is what helped me get Happy Birthday to me. Um, uh, so, I, I mean, it's hard to talk about the reception back then. I mean, I, I didn't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. I know it's really something that you pay attention to now because you want to see, you know, the box office opening. But um, I just, I mean, I just, I didn't really pay attention. I don't think it did like super well. It's not until recently that uh, it's, it's more like a, a word of mouth from the fans that I think has generated the interest in it. Because uh, I, you know, personally, when I was doing any of these movies, I didn't think anybody was gonna see them at all. I, I was like, okay, we'll just, we'll do it. We'll get, we'll, you know, experience, you know, we'll learn our craft, you know, we'll get a check and uh, we'll work with these great people and then it'll go away. And it wasn't until like the late nineties that, you know, I had these two guys, Jason Knowles and Dan Hunter from Terror Trap. I don't know if anybody knows about that web page, but they primarily specialize in horror movies from the 60s, 70s, 70s and 80s. And um, so they, they, you know, they phoned me up when I'm in New York. They were living in New York, and I get a phone call out of the blue from these guys, and they're like, you know, this, this, is, this is Leslie Donaldson from Happy Birthday to Me. And I'm like, yeah. And, and they're like, oh, my God. And so they're like, can we do an interview with you? And I'm like, okay, why? And uh, they're like, you have no idea. It's like, you know, Funeral Home and, and Curtains and all these movies are like huge. And I'm like, what? I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. So 
so for me to talk about like openings and that, I just it's it's I think it's just through the years and word of mouth and you know people in the industry liking it and you know it, I think that's what's really generated the success and I'm I'm happy for that. I think that's fantastic. And for you, Happy Birthday to Me was kind of a bigger film yes. after this too, with a you know a, a director had to have a bigger yeah. name and it was a yes. bigger release and would have probably if this got you that that brought you to more yeah. prominence definitely. Yeah, exactly. And then curtains and then Deadly Eyes and you know. And there's one thing I would say when you're talking about how you would never have expected people to call you out of the blue years later no. for these movies. And that's yeah. the one thing I would say is that you know, a lot of people, you being young and being a Hammer fan and all, right. jumped at the chance to do a horror film. Yes, yes. And a lot of people, a lot of actors, sometimes look down on them. It's kind of, you know, oh, they look down, yeah. it's the skeleton in the closet or yeah. the, the end of their career. And right. what I always tell people is that horror fans are the most devoted, devoted fans in the fans. world. So they if you are. do any key cult horror films, doesn't it have to be a huge Well, film? that's why they all want to do them now. Exactly. All the big stars want to do them now because they know that it's it's not it doesn't have the stigma it used to have back when we were doing it because it was kind of back then in the seventies was like, you know, unless it was a big film like The Exorcist or something like that it was sort of like one step up from from porn in a way you know you were like you know, I did a horror movie you know but I mean, this was like a low rent basement yeah. of the industry to a lot of people that's the way they looked at right it. you started but, out doing that and then you worked worked up but that was all they were doing in Canada back then they were only making horror movies and comedies they were making this these a lot of teen a lot of teen comedies a lot of horror right. films stuff of that sort but yeah. these, these horror films I always tell people too you think of how many films came out these years came out and so many Hollywood releases are just completely forgotten. Yes. And 30, 40 years later, yes. fans will still come out at midnight on a Tuesday just, I know. <laughs> just to Love see you guys. a film they've never seen before in many cases. Exactly. And so I always tell young, make a horror film. If you make a key yeah. horror film, 30 years later, people are going to call you, they want to interview you, they're going to ask you to come to different fan conventions. Right. They're, they're the movies that actually get made and put in the theaters now. I mean, you know, it's not those the nice relationship stories that they're the ones that have the harder time getting distribution. But... You know, it's this or the big, you know, blockbuster, iron, you know, whatever, Iron Man kind of movies that get... It's the genre yeah. pictures now that yeah, really genre. are kind of what we people Exactly, people. exactly. Um, do you have any other questions out anyone? Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> what are you going to do next? Uh, what am I doing next? Uh, well, I just finished doing a film called Abnormal Attraction with... Eileen Dietz and uh, Bruce Davidson and Malcolm McDowell and hopefully it'll come out next year. It's going to be a fun one. And I've just written a television series, a half-hour comedy that I'm hoping to get a network interested in. So um, I, I've turned myself, I've gone kind of behind the scenes and now starting to write and hopefully produce more stuff myself. Um, as you get older, you have to sort of think in that term. Kind of. So we'll see. <laughs> it's the way the industry is kind of. It's always... It Work on your writing skills, work on the other stuff, because that's exactly. the way it works. Yep. And when was the last time you saw Funeral Home um, or Cries Cries the Night in a theater with an audience? How, how long has it been since you've seen it with an audience? Um, you know, it's funny because when it first came out, I was really embarrassed to go and see it in, in a theater with an audience. So I went, I was just telling uh, Armando, I went to see it at a, um, a drive-in. And... That's how I saw During it. During the original and, release. Yeah, I went to the drive-in because I, you know, but it was dark. It, I, the, the, all the quality, the films are, it's very dark, so I'm hoping this will be a... Yeah, it is a, it is a very dark film if you've ever seen it. Is it, it is a dark film. I, I haven't seen this print yet, so I don't know what the condition of the print is, right. but it is a dark film. But I think in some ways it adds to kind of it the adds atmosphere to the of the movie. film. This, yeah. So this is the first time since the original, original release that you've seen it with an audience. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things also is yeah. very often actors and directors have not seen their films with an audience since the original release. Yeah, I haven't, so... Do have any, any, any final okay. things you wanted to say before we go into the film about working with the director, since this is obviously a tribute night to, yes, to, to three of his films. Probably the only theater in the world doing a triple feature tribute to William Fruitt, but we're happy to... Happy, no, seriously, I mean, a lot of repertory theaters show the same films over and over again. I understand you have to sometimes show The Goonies and things that over and over again. And, you know, if I, I can show The Beyond here every week and pack the house. But, you know, it's really what I like about something like this. I did not program this. Quentin programmed this night. So I'm not going to take credit for it. But, you know, I like the fact that we can show things that you're not going to see right. over and over again. These are films that in many cases have not hit screens in decades. Right. right? And yep. especially horror films, genre films, action films, comedies, they need an audience. Yeah, they do. It plays much better. Yeah. Well, God bless Quentin for loving William Fruitt. That's all I can say. And when I saw this on the calendar, <laughs> I thought, wow, we've got three William Fruits. All right, let's go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, um, I, I, it's exciting that he likes him. And I actually sent uh, William an email. I haven't heard from him because he's, he's probably, he's 82 now. So I don't know 
how many older people go on their email on a regular basis. But I, uh, I told him about this night, and I told him about the triple feature, and I, I just I asked him if he had anything that he would like me to pass on, but unfortunately he hasn't responded to that email. So, I mean, I, I was kind of late getting it out, but if it if he does respond, I will pass it on to you. Certainly, you certainly. Pass it on to Quentin. I just find, does he have an AOL address? I find usually most older directors have I, AOL addresses. I have an AOL, AOL address. <laughs> okay. So, so he's the, a Gmail. Maybe, he's, you know, okay. he's doing good. Say, maybe he's just filled up with AOL spam somewhere. I'm his grandma here. I still have it. Okay, no comment about older directors having AOL addresses. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Any final questions in the audience before we go to enjoy Funeral Home? Over there on the left. The sleaziest? Well, the, I guess the, the two previous movies. The oh, first, they were sleazy. The, the first were, movie we I had know, is pretty and they rough. were shown first. I don't know. I mean, I'm. The first was a little rough. Yeah, there's no sleaze in this. Well, there's there may be like there's a couple in it that kind of can be sort of sleazy, but not not like I'm not, I didn't get to see all of the first one, but I, little, I heard it's brutal. Little, yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, this one's more atmosphere, really. I it's mean, more atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, part of the reason I think it's popular because it came out in that right time period, yeah. that late seventies to mid eighties period, where there's a real nostalgia for the, the horror films of that time period. Right. Right. But it's not a slasher film. It's not. No. It's no, not it's, a you know kids. It's, Getting it on and getting slaughtered. It's a different, no. a different mood and atmosphere to this. There's, if you're looking for nudity in this film, you, you should leave now. <laughs> There's none. Sorry. Okay. I want to uh, first off before I before I let them go, I want to say also I want to thank. She mentioned uh, our friend Armando. I want to thank him for also for letting you know about this and yes. and and inviting you down here. So yeah. thank you to Armando for hooking us up. Awesome. And getting you down here today. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I want to thank you for coming down here. And folks, we had a couple little trailer reel for you guys. Some trailers fitting with the theme of the night. Then we go into Funeral Home, starring Leslie Donaldson on the big screen. Thank you again.